Top 10 Health Tips for Women Number 1. Zap Your Stress The biggest issue I see in most of my patients is that they have too much on their plates and want to juggle it all. Stress can have significant health consequences, from infertility to higher risks of depression, anxiety, and heart disease. Find the stress reduction method that works for you and stick with it. Number 2. Stop Dieting Eating healthy doesn't mean you have to forego your favorite glass of wine or a piece of chocolate cake now and then. The key is moderation. Get a mix of lean proteins, healthy fats, smart carbs, and fiber. Number 3. Don't add on calcium. Too much absorbed calcium can increase the risk of kidney stones and may even increase the risk of heart disease. If you're under 50, shoot for 1000 mg per day, while over 50 women should be getting 1200 mg per day mainly through diet. About 3 servings of calcium rich foods such as milk, salmon, and almonds. Number 4. Do more than cardio. Women need a mix of cardio and resistance or weight bearing exercise at least 3 to 5 times a week to help prevent osteoporosis heart disease, cancer, and diabetes. Exercise also promotes good self-image, which is really important to a woman's mental health. Number 5. Think about fertility. While many women have no problem getting pregnant in their late 30s and even into their early 40s, a woman's fertility may start to decline as early as 32. So if you want to have kids, talk to your doctor about options, like freezing your eggs, Number 6. Appreciate Birth Control. Birth control gets a bad rap, but not only can it keep you from getting pregnant before you're ready, studies show it can lower the risk of uterine and ovarian cancer as well as regulate your cycle. Number 7. See your doctor every year. Make sure you get a pap test to check for cervical cancer every 3 years if you are 21 or older. If you are 30 65, you can get both a pap test and HPV test every 5 years. Older than that, you may be able to stop testing if your doctor says you are a low risk. If you are sexually active and have a higher risk for STDs, get tests for chlamydia, gonorrhea, and syphilis yearly. Take an HIV test at least once, more frequently if you're at risk. Don't skip your yearly checkup. Your doctor needs to annually assess many other issues such as potential infection, your need for contraception, and sexual complaints. Number 8. Have good sex. Sex reduces stress and may lower the risk of chronic disease, but only if you enjoy it. If anything prevents you from sex, recent studies suggest this can put you at greater risk of heart disease and psychological problems. Number 10. Consider genetic testing. Doctors can now screen people with a family history of breast cancer, ovarian cancer, and chronic diseases to assess their risk, and then consider preventive measures. Talk to your doctor. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe for other videos. It's me again, Hoa. Have you been getting on with improving your health and nutrition? I'm sure you've been doing great and can already see the improvements. Food and nutrition is a good starting point, but there's a lot more we can do to live a healthy lifestyle, like exercise, personal hygiene, regular health checks, and gynecological examinations, and not delaying seeing a doctor when you really feel unwell. After a long day, we've all felt too tired to exercise. I know the feeling. And it doesn't take long for a lack of exercise to have a big impact in all the wrong places. 
and it's no secret that a lack of exercise and a poor diet can dramatically increase the risk of heart disease and diabetes. After just a short time exercising, you'll feel refreshed and more productive. You'll also take fewer sick days. So as little as 30 minutes a day can make a real improvement to your well-being. Combined with a good diet, it's a great way to start a healthier lifestyle. Oh, and don't forget to drink plenty of water so your body is well hydrated. After exercising, it's important to practice personal hygiene because when we sweat, it creates bad odours and bacteria. Personal hygiene is something we need to think about throughout the day, like washing our hands before eating or after using the toilet to prevent sickness. And regularly brushing our teeth to avoid bad breath. But let's be honest, we are all sometimes a bit careless about personal hygiene, especially down there. We need to be more prepared for our menstrual cycles. Keeping good feminine hygiene helps us to stay clean and well when that time comes. And don't forget to change sanitary pads or tampons and wash regularly to prevent infections. While we're talking about our bodies, there's something else to talk about. Did you know having a health check, and especially a gynecological health check, is provided free of charge by your factory, and it's mandatory. Many of us avoid this because we don't understand this important procedure that helps to prevent diseases, especially cervical cancer. The health check, especially gynecological health check, is simple, quick and private, so there's really nothing to worry about. It's important even if you're not sexually active. And remember, prevention is always better than the cure. But seeing a doctor should never be put off if symptoms persist. Often we self-diagnose when we're sick or go to the closest store selling medicines, but consulting a qualified doctor is much better and avoids putting our health at risk. So remember, exercise every day, drink enough water, practice personal hygiene and have regular free health checks to avoid preventable diseases and expensive treatments. If you do, then you're on your way to a healthier lifestyle and that's good for you and everyone.